To finish our discussion on edema, we will talk about the morphology of edemia, edema. There's three main types of edema, the subcutaneous edema, pulmonary edema, and edema of the brain. And in the subcutane subcutaneous edema, uh, there's renal and cardiac. In the renal edema, or edema caused by renal failure or renal problems, it, it's usually diffuse. Diffuse edema. It's all over. It's not just in one spot. And this is usually due to nephrotic syndrome. Uh, the kidneys are leaking too much protein, and that causes a uh, change in the concentration of the protein. And that can watch the previous video to to learn more about that. Uh, cardiac edema. Uh, usually, there's a there's a term that's called dependent edema. Dependent edema is kind of the concept of if someone is standing gravity gravity is pulling pulling downwards right and so people will start getting uh, edema in their legs or in their feet and that's because it's uh, dependent upon gravity or if someone is lying down like this in a bed they start getting edema right here like on their sacrum or on their their buttock area edema and that's because gravity is pulling it down and it kind of accumulates right here and so that's called dependent edema and that's usually involved with a cardiac problem some kind of heart problem and usually it's the right side right side of the heart that is the cause of dependent edema. So if you're a clinician, uh, you might notice that, well, I only get a patient might say, I only get edema when I stand up or when I lay down, I start feeling edema. Or if you're checking your patients, you might see edema um, appearing on the back side. And that is usually an indication of right side heart failure. Um, the right ventricle is not pumping enough blood and so the blood is backing up causing causing uh, this dependent edema. There's also another concept that's called pitting edema. So if you have a diffuse, uh, you know, all over edema, someone pushes down, let's say this is your, just say is your arm right here, and someone pushes down right here, and when they, they take their finger away, there's a pit. There's a hole still there. So you've kind of pushed and you've kind of, you know, squeezed this water into the adjacent tissues. And then when you leave, it doesn't leak back in. It takes some time to leak back in and fill in that place. That's called pitting edema. Another concept is in severe cases, in severe cases, you might have periorbital edema. So wherever there's a loose connective tissue, loose connective tissue, um, edema might first go there because it's loose. The extracellular matrix is not, not rigid. It's not tough. There's not a lot of force rejecting that edema back. So there's a, it's called periorbital edema. And orbital refers to eye. So that around the eye in this kind of softer tissue, you start getting edema swelling in there. And that's called periorbital edema, and it might be an indication of some kind of severe disease. Pulmonary edema is where um, fluid starts accumulating in the lungs. And this can be dangerous because there won't be enough space or there won't be en there, the oxygen exchange won't be good enough in the lungs so that people can suffocate to death if they start getting too much edema in their lungs and it's usually caused by right or sorry left ventricular damage maybe move down here okay so if we draw a heart here and you know their their blood comes into the heart through the in the vena cavas right atrium right ventricle 
and then it goes to the lungs, get oxygenated, comes back, and then the left into the left atrium, left atrium, and then to the left ventricle, and then goes out to the aorta. So if you have the left ventricle that's causing problems, well then blood is going to get backed up. So blood's going to start backing up, backing up, and these are the lungs. So then you're going to start getting edema in the lungs. Another problem is with edema in the brain. If you have hydrocephalus, which is a water brain, or you have some kind of problem, so inside your brain, your skull here, you have you have a hole right here, the butt base of your skull. That's called the foramen magnum. And your brain's inside here. And because the, the skull doesn't have any place to expand, what will happen if you start getting accumulation in the brain, what can, can happen is you get your brain matter um, herniating through this hole. So this brain starts squeezing out of here and that can start pinching off the medulla that you know the brain stem that's right here and that can cause you to die um, cause all kinds of problems and you know the cerebral spinal fluid is constantly circulating and if there's a block somewhere where it won't it won't drain that can cause edema in the brain or if you get injured that can cause edema in the brain and so you know there these edema in the subcutaneous tissues, uh, edema in the lungs and in the brain can be a serious problem. And so we need to look at what's causing that. So that wraps up the morphology of edema.